Check me out here, please. Okay, so we're about to enter the two most intense hours of this conference. First, we're gonna have a presentation about the work that Army RPC is doing. Uh, we believe that's an important effort. We, want, we thank them for being here. Uh, Hack Miami is an organization that has indeed um, helped a lot of our members to go on and work through three letter agencies, Army, Air Force, you name it. So we are very military friendly, always been and always will. I myself are a Title 10 civilian, US Marine Corps Cyber Auxiliary. So this is uh, something that I do out of, of, of volunteer work. I believe in this. And we are thankful that they came here, that they sponsor us. Uh, please give them a round of applause. So we're gonna have a presentation by the, uh, the Army ROTC, which won't be very long. And then after that, we're gonna have a panel with our, our um, guest, which is, can we say who he is? Okay, hold on. Uh, well, actually, let's save it till the very, uh, well, at the closing of this. Time. Okay, well, no, we can't reveal it yet, but I can tell you, you don't wanna miss it. And then right, right after that, we're gonna have this gentleman right here, Michael Rosenfeld, and he's gonna give us a presentation, a about a potential attack on the U.S. Uh, gas stations. It's something that sounds scary, uh, and I am looking forward to see this presentation. So as you can see, we are like in crescendo, right? So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna leave it to... There you go. Thank you, sir. Keith Papka, I'm a 23-year Army officer, uh, I'm an engineer officer, and you're like, why wasn't they sending an engineer here? Because they couldn't afford the cyber officer to come, so I'm going to come in in that instead, and I'm going to explain a little bit about what I do and what we do as an organization. So I'm the director of the Florida Army ROTC Area of Operation, which means I have University of Miami, Florida International University, Florida Atlantic University, Nova Southeastern University, Broward College, Miami Dade College. We operate around all nine colleges down here, and we have about 225 students currently in our program. And most people don't even know what the difference is, right? So when I was a young Keith Papko, I enlisted. I enlisted in the New York National Guard, went in the infantry, and then decided I wanted to go off to college. When I went off to college, that's where I found out what an officer is. An officer is basically a project manager, right? And they're a project manager across all different types of branches. We have infantry, engineering, we have cyber, financing, logistics. And so why would someone want to take this opportunity to pursue a pathway in, this, in that general direction? It's easy. You get free education. So you got your college paid for. So you get four years of your college paid for. You make $420 a month for just being in that credited class that you're taking while you're going to college pursuing your degree. So I'm not gonna talk too much about all the different pathways. I'm gonna focus it more towards cyber. But before I do, we'll go really further into ROTC and we'll move. What are the two most powerful words in the English language? The two most powerful words in the English language are I am. Because what comes after I am will shape your life. What you speak after I am. What you believe after I am. I'm Johnny Samples. I am Cadet Vanessa Santos. I am Christian Yakis. I am Teresa Keen. I'm Cadet Aninian. I'm Cadet Love. I am Alan Sanchez. I am Zechariah Adamodi. I am Celia Murphy. I am Santiago Groff. I am Nicole Petroselli. I attend Stevens Institute of Technology. Central State University. And East Tennessee State University. The University of Arkansas at Palm Bluff. University of Puerto Rico, Rio Pedras. And Mississippi State University. Nova Southeastern University. And Texas A&M University. Florida International University. And the Savannah State University. And the University of Texas at Austin. And the University of Miami. Florida International University. And I attend the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, majoring in Industrial Technology, Management, and Applied Engineering. In international relations. I study food science and technology. I am a biology major. I'm an electrical engineering major. I'm a psychology major public relations marketing and business criminal justice major i'm a nursing major a major in psychology industrial distribution major i study mechanical engineering i am a leader i am a leader i am a leader i'm a leader i am a leader i am on the team it's really simply to show the diversity of our program 
We're all, we operate out of over 200 and I think 79 university programs in the nation. We're in every single state. We provide an opportunity for students not only to partake in, our, in what we teach, which is leadership courses. We teach four different leadership courses. But you don't have to be a part of our program. You don't have to join the Army. You don't have to join the National Guard. We open it up for anyone, for a freshman and sophomore to be in the program. And then if they choose to go out and pursue a career path, they can choose to go into the active duty Army, the National Guard, or the Army Reserves with a commitment of three to four years, depending on the scholarship that they want to take. OK. We produce over 5,000 officers in the nation every year. Right, we're the largest commissioning source in the nation. So these officers go off at an early age of usually around 23 years old, and they're immediately placed in what we call a platoon, or a small scale organization, and they're gonna be in charge of 35 to 45 soldiers. So right off the bat, at 23 years old, they're gonna be in charge of, say, 40, 45 soldiers, and probably close to about $200,000 budget in terms of their equipment that they're manning, and it could go all the way up to 1.5 million at such an early age. When I was commissioned as an officer, by the time I made first lieutenant, uh, the hurricanes had hit down here in Florida. Remember, there was a time where we had like four different hurricanes, and they sent me down here when Jeb Bush was the governor, and at 25 years old, I was briefing Jeb Bush on how I was going to fix his, power emergency, his emergency power generation uh, to his hospital. So the amount of responsibility that the Army puts in its officers is immense. We talked about the annual pay. Right now, we pay in our scholarships for anyone that comes into the program. We cover either room and board, uh, which is $10,000 a year, or we'll pay for the actual college tuition. So for instance, a uh, college student that gets a four-year degree scholarship to the University of Miami is getting almost $225,000 over that four-year period for them to get an education in the degree field. So why is this important? So if you know people that want to go into cyber, which is where the Army has seized the new battlefield. Since 2012, the Army saw cyber as the new battlefield. That's where the wars are gonna be won. And so what we have done is we're investing heavily into building the cyber branch, and that's really going on an offensive and defensive nature. That means every, there's three different pathways you can go, and I'll explain a few of those in a little bit. So as I said, we operate 273 host universities, but then we operate in a lot of other sub-universities. Those are just the main host ones. We have over a thousand partnership universities, so they they're all have a, a contract with the host universities. And like I said, we're the largest produce, providers of scholarships in the nation. All right, so let's talk cyber, because this is Hack Miami, and I know I'm not gonna say a lot of sophisticated terminology that goes into the cyber world, but I'll try my best. So right now, the size of the force that we have is only a thousand cyber officers in the Army. And so what we're doing is we started new initiatives. There's also what's called the JRTC. That's the Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps. They operate in all the high schools that are around there. That is not tied to what we do. We are partnered with them. So that the JRTC is how to make a better citizen, and ROTC is how to make a better leader. And so what those JRTCs now have is we started a cyber program with the JRTCs where we actually said and train professors of cyber down to these JRTC programs to educate these students on the career opportunities in the cyber realm. And then if they choose to, <coughs> they can go off into one of our universities that I showed there and pursue a cyber degree with a scholarship to cover that as they move forward. Once they graduate, they have a chance to go into the cyber branch. Like I said, it was 2012, that was where we started initiating, and in 2014, we stood up the first cyber branch of the Army. So here are the different career fields that we offer in the cyber community. This is broken up into three tiers. In the Army, we have commission officers, which is what I am. We have warrant officers, which are skilled professionals in a particular uh, uh, career field of that, of that branch. And then we have the art enlisted soldiers. Those are the ones that will move off and they you know, sign up after high school or, or whatnot, and then they go off to basic training, and then they go and serve in our Army and protect us. At the officer side, we have those three that I talked about. You have cyber warfare officer. Those are your offensive defensive. That's the CIA, the FBI, that's working really to go and try to find out who's hacking into the system. So you go, all these are top secret clearances, by the way. So you have to be able to get a top secret clearance. I'll talk how you get that. You have your cyber electro, electromagnetic warfare officer. Those are the ones that will be on the battlefield designed to 
to jam the enemy's area of operation when they're going in there. So it's a really complex position, uses a lot of magnetic warfare uh, tools that we provide. And then finally, you have your cyber capabilities development officer. Those are what you see a lot in the companies today. You know, what's the biggest failure we have in our companies is educating the employees not to click on the damn email that did not come from inside, right? And so those officers help train the employees of the Army so we don't make those mistakes. We don't give up valuable information that's out there. So these are the three career paths that we offer. I've already explained a few of what each one of these do. And in each one of these, it's the same thing as I talked about before. Uh, when they graduate from their college with the degree field, that it doesn't have to be cyber. We also, anyone that has a degree in computer science, could be computer uh, uh, mechanics, whatever, as long as it ties to the cyber branch, they have a good opportunity to get accepted into it. We're located all over the United States. You can see right there, those are all the cyber units that are located here, as well as over in Europe. You have Belgium, Germany, Italy. We're in Korea as well. And yes, you can get stationed in Hawaii as a young uh, lieutenant operating the cyber world. And so who are they looking for? Really, anyone can do any job. I will tell you, I was not a degreed engineer when the Army, when I, when I graduated from University of Albany, they said, you're gonna go into the, become an engineer, right? That was not my degree. My degree was in political science, believe it or not. My master's is engineering now, but the Army will, will give you opportunities. But in, in essence, what they're really looking for is really those mathematical, those curious, uh, logical individuals, those ones that really like to get into, if you like computer uh, programming, when I speak to parents that are talking about their kids, they like video games and stuff like that. Those are all some of the tools that they look for, that those, those creative and those curious individuals that are really into tech, those are the people they're trying to bring in so that they can get them a training. I'm trying to rush this because I know you guys aren't, aren't, aren't here to see me. So, so minimum requirements. All they ask is you gotta be a United States citizen to be a part of our, our ROTC program. For cyber, you have to have a top secret clearance. We have two clearance levels, secret and top secret. Every soldier will get a top will get a secret clearance, but to be in the cyber branch, it must be top, or top secret because you work a lot with the CIA and a lot of uh, information that's going overseas. Uh, you have to pass a polygraph. You have to pass our physical demands that we ask you to do, which is easy. Um, you got to have a, a bachelor's degree at minimum just to get in. So no officer can ever become an officer unless they have their four-year degree. If they don't make the four-year degree, you're not allowed to become an officer in the United States Army. And you can read the rest of, on there. So what's the so what of this whole thing? I know none of you are going to say, hey, can you sign me up, right? Well, maybe some of you. But most of you aren't going to say that. But you might know a family or know someone that has a kid that's looking to go and find a, a pretty fulfilling career field. And I will tell you, mine was three years I was getting the hell out. That was simple as it. I got my third year, I was like, holy cow, I'm having so much fun. Can't believe the responsibility they're giving me. So I said, okay, guess what? When I stop having fun, I will get out. 23 years later, I'm still having fun. So I will tell you, there's a lot of things that people don't know about what it's like to become a commission officer in the United States and the education benefits that you get. Not to mention, after three years, you qualify for $75,000 to go back to school and get another master's degree. And now I still can get a second one if I want to. So there are a lot of opportunities. If you have any questions, please feel free to look online. If you want to check out going to University of Miami, just Google University of Miami Army ROTC. All my programs down here. Families are welcome to come down. We'll give them a tour of the facilities and any information. What are your questions? I knew it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got, actually, I got one. Yeah. Uh, you see there's like a thousand officers in the Army right now that are doing cyber? Thousand cyber officers, yep. That seems abysmally low. It is <laughs> crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, what's the target? What's, what's the target for the officers open in cyber? What's the target number? couldn't tell you more. It, it's probably going to keep growing and growing as the battlefield starts to expand throughout the, the cyber network. I mean, right now, I remember when I was in, I was using the floppy disk. I don't know if any of you remember the, the floppy disk, right? That's where I would put all my files on that would write evaluations, counseling on. Then we moved to the thumb drives, and then all of a sudden they figured out, oh, look, we can put uh, you know, a whole bunch of hackable stuff on thumb drives, and a soldier puts it in, and they got rid of that. And we went to CDs, and then they found out they can do it with CDs, and now we are purely over a network. We're not sticking anything in our laptops anymore. 
So as we started to get the defense going up, which is a lot more education, which is what we do every single year, it's mandatory. Now we're just building this branch up where we can actually go and fight the battlefield uh, there. They're saying basically the future wars are going to be won uh, over the internet. That's, that's it. And at some point, we're going to lose the internet. Once you take out all the satellites, <coughs> satellites are down, Space Force, that's why you think it exists. Once that's gone, people have to understand how to operate on the analog side of the house. So all these days of using GPS is going to be gone. But that's what our electric warfare officer that I showed you does, is it basically creates the enemy to fight in an analog uh, state. Blocks the satellites from their ability to be able to fight us. So really cool career opportunities. They want to become a combat engineer, have them call me out. <laughs> Any other questions? Is that everyone? Yeah? What if you want to serve your company? If you want to help out the cyber <laughs> department, but you don't have a four-year degree, and you're already in the industry as a professional. So if you want to serve, and my recommendation, if you have an organization or a company, is to open up internships for ROTC cadets to actually work for you and learn. And that pays both ways, because that student now will also go off and get an education, top secret clearance, and if you were good to them, come back to you and bring all this that training that we provide them while they're out there. Yes? Let me uh, take that question again. Okay. What if we want to serve and, you know, and help the country with, by cyber, but we don't have a clear degree. What if we're Did you see? Department? Let me go back. So right now, the total force size, this is just for the Army side, but we have civilian contractors that are all in there. Okay. So you can go into the Department uh, of, um, oh, what am I thinking here? Uh, the, it's, uh, it's, there's something else, but it, it's, basically, it's basically through the, uh, the government. It's a GSA position. And you can get a GSA 13, 12 job, and you'll get a uh, clearance doing that. So you'll have to get a background check, but you don't have to enlist to be a part of the cyber break. Just like if you wanted to go and be in the FBI. You know, there's a, not everyone went through FBI training in the FBI. There's a lot of people that work there, contractors that work there. So there's other ways to, to do it. Any other questions? Good. All right, that's all I got. So.